to you. My name is Maria Kondzielska and this is Poland Daily Culture. And all lovers of Polish literature will like the series because we're talking about The Doll by Bolesław Prus. And here with me is Julia Wilde or Julia Wilde. <laughs> A PhD candidate at Warsaw University and a specialist in literature. And we're talking about one of the greatest masterpieces when it comes to Polish literature. So I would say that the other book, which is also one of my favorites uh, of Bolesław Prus, otherwise Aleksander Głowacki, because that was his really true name, and Bolesław Prus is just a nickname, who didn't really pass to us when we, when we read the book in, the, in high school. <laughs> I would say if we make like a quick, uh, we go to, with the mic around the around the high school and ask like, is Bolesław Prus a real, like real name? A lot of people, lot, lot of people would say know. yes. Right. Yeah. It's very interesting that he uh, took his pen name after the uh, coat of arms because he was also uh, uh, a nobleman, but an impoverished and so on and so forth. So his situation was pretty similar to the one of um, Wokulski himself, right? But what is also interesting, why did he take this pen name? I don't know, I you don't know. know okay, so he always wanted to be a scientist and he was uh, fascinated by mathematics, physics and other scientists, uh, science, sciences and he thought that writing isn't really a serious thing to do. So he uh, took this pen name uh, and he, well, because he didn't want to, he. I think he still hoped that maybe one day he could become a famous scientist, not a writer. So he wanted to preserve his real name uh, for big things, for important uh, inventions. And this Bolesław Prus was just for this, you know, scribbling, writing. <laughs> so it's <laughs> really he became funny. one of the best authors <laughs> yes. in Polish history yes. and Polish literature. That's a shame. I do think he he should own, he should get an Nobel oh, Prize. Yeah. Undoubtedly, yes, yes. And I think, I don't know if you agree with me, but I have a feeling uh, that there is, there is, you are either so-called Team Sienkiewicz or Team Prus. And if you love one, you don't really like the other one. And I, I must say it's very true for me because I've always been Team Prus and I wasn't a big fan of uh, Sienkiewicz. To be honest, I agree that, I mean, I, like, I love reading Prus. I enjoy the film versions of Henrik Sienkiewicz. Yeah, it's okay. They're okay. They're okay. <laughs> yes. Yes. But yeah, I'm not a fan of all the descriptions. It's hard to get through it. Yes, and my problem with Sienkiewicz is that those female characters are always so superficial and they are all the same for me. And uh, But Prus is a real master of creating a deep... Uh, complex characters or also female characters. I think it's really important. Like Emancipantki, the other as uh, well. of his uh, novel, yes. it's all about female characters. Yes, exactly. Yes, that's true. And uh, what's also interesting that this dualism, let's say, uh, was also present uh, at, uh, at their time, so I mean Sienkiewicz and uh, Proust's time, uh, because they were kind of rivals and Proust always felt that um, Sienkiewicz didn't deserve all the uh, praise and uh, that he, that he himself, so Proust was better that he wasn't so successful. He was very bitter about it. So I, I understand it to some extent. I think it's very interesting how they were rivals uh, and how we, how also nowadays, uh, for example, in high school, there were always those two teams. So those who loved Sienkiewicz and those who loved Proust. Um, so it's still present in a way. It's so it's Proust winning more and more right now because yes, yes. his language, the language written of, is still very modern and it's understandable for us. When Sienkiewicz is already very old, superficial, and it's sometimes hard to uh, to get through. Even not, maybe not in everything, but yes, especially in the trilogy. Yes, and I think that the problem with with Schenke well, the problem, uh, he was writing for his contemporaries who needed to read something that was uplifting, that was reminding of the glorious past of Poland, while uh, Proust was pointing out 
um, things that weren't that glorious, that needed to be changed. And he was very aware of the weaknesses of Poland. It's harder to read about something, about your vices, than to read about your virtues, right? Agreed. But there is one very interesting thing. Both of them, Hans Schenkiewicz and Proust, uh, in, they write about Poland, of course, and but also they have two great novels, which are in the ancient times. True. Yeah. So, Sienkiewicz writes Kovadis, which was one of, one of the best of his books, to be honest. And Prost writes Faro, yeah. which is a masterpiece. Yes, that's true, and that, that's very interesting. And I feel that um, Prost is much better at, at psychology of the characters, while Sienkiewicz is much better at the psychology of the readers, so to speak. <laughs> right? Very well put. <laughs> psychology of the readers of those times. Yes, because exactly. Ch they changed. Right, right. So because Proust is not getting old. Yes, Proust right. is not getting old, yes. especially like, uh, when it comes to, to the doll is still living. And I would say that it mirrors uh, when we go through Warsaw, there are so many places which remind us about, which are also captured in the book and are real uh, right now. So uh, we can take the doll and, and make a, a stroll around Warsaw and we'll visit the same places or we can see them through our eyes. Nowadays it's of course more difficult, but before the Second World War it was just just an easy walk, right? And all the places were there. And it's, it's just marvelous how many plaques you can find, how many uh, statues or places that you know that, that are connected with the book. I remember uh, once I was uh, going to meet someone in Wazienki, and uh, now I don't remember who it was, or what we were going to talk about, but I remember that I was so excited that it was the place where Bokulski was waiting to meet Isabella. They one wanted to say that already, even today, so many couples go for a stroll to Wazienki. It was the first day, place where they dated, yes. Bokulski and Isabella. And okay. we'll stop here. If you yourself never had done a stroll in Wazienki, it's a good point to take the doll by Bolesław Prus and go through it and you will feel like time traveling. And thank you very much for watching Poland Daily Culture.